I have a few things to say in my conclusions. I would like now that the floor is yours. We have uh, seven minutes left, uh, three minutes for the conclusions. So we have five minutes. Yes, please introduce yourself and be brief. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will do both. I am Johannes Gresper from the Ministry of Environment from Austria, and I will be brief. Um, just a comment to the presentation of Patricia, and I have to say that I would like to agree very much with what she has said. And I don't think that the picture that she was drawing was black and white, it was quite colorful. Um, and more than that, I agree with this observation that it must be frustrating, it is actually a frustration, if NGOs or the public uh, concerned must have the impression that they can participate in the procedure, but in the end have no real influence into a final decision on a project. Um, but more than that, even if a negative IR statement, for example, can still lead to a positive uh, uh, permission. That is something that has really to be considered, uh, because, but I understand in every country it's different ruling about it. The question is, when is it possible for a party or the, for, a, for um, an organization, an NGO, for example, to have a real influence on a project decision? It's only given if you, are, if you have a local standee in a procedure. And this certainly has to be ruled out by the, by the very national, by the country, by the country of a region. So it's, it's up to the, to the states. To, to probably change their, let's say, administrative uh, rules to provide uh, also um, um, NGOs or the communities or the private people from the foreign country with the same local standards within their own country. So this is the task for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Not to be misunderstood, the presentation of Patricia was colorful, I agree. Only her final conclusion that ESPO could be useless <laughs> it's the black and white one. We are here to uh, do the best we can that uh, ESPO becomes uh, powerful to address this. Belarus and then uh, Slovenia. Uh, uh, Thank you. We were very impressed by the presentations we've seen. They were very uh, useful positions. There's uh, just one exception in the presentation of uh, Lithuania, which seems to say on, see only its own side and has not stated, uh, well, is stating that what they do is uh, fine and what everyone else does is uh, bad. The site selected by Belarus and uh, Russia is uh, reported on in the report uh, exhaustively uh, their criteria given for the evaluation of alternative sites. Uh, but it's important to, to see and hear the views of others, and not just to hear and see oneself. Uh, this is a very important factor in carrying out environmental impact assessments. If you only focus your attention on yourself, then you cannot hear or see what others are doing. And I'd like to take this opportunity to ask the Secretariat to, to disseminate two Belarusian documents. They're on the site in Belarusian. Uh, there's the uh, declaration of Lithuania stating that uh, Lithuania is uh, carrying out EIAs everywhere and Belarus is not. Uh, so we have two answers, one from the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment, uh, which uh, has made uh, several responses to official statements uh, to Lithuania and a previous reply to Lithuania. So if the Secretariat agrees, then we can circulate these documents uh, in English as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I propose that we take also the other interventions and then we give the floor to the panel to react globally. Slovenia. Thank you very much. Uh, Slovenia, thanks for presentations and welcome the initiative to discuss the application of ESPO Convention for activities related to nuclear energy use. We can announce that we have signed bilateral agreements on exchange of information related to nuclear activities with all our neighboring countries, and so far uh, the cooperation has been very transparent. But uh, we have or planned several uh, nuclear activities, nuclear power plant, nuclear reactor, a repository for medium and low-level nuclear waste, 
and the environmental impact assessment for nuclear, existing nuclear power plant and nuclear reactor was made many years ago. With regard to a repository for medium and low level nuclear waste, however, the strategic environmental assessment have be, been completed, completed, while environmental impact assessment for the activity has not been started yet. Our experiences show that in case of nuclear activities, the uh, alternatives are difficult issues. While in strategic, in strategic in environmental assessment, uh, safety is a prevailing issue. So uh, this consequently requires uh, uh, criteria for location within the existing nuclear activities. When considering this issue, the question also arises of the extension of operation of the nuclear power plant. The nuclear power plant in Slovenia has been de uh, des designed for 40 years operation life uh, and existing AI decision and operation license is not limited in time. However, there are some technical limitations in license that would limit operation to 40 years. The operator has already filled an application for extension of operating life based on the analysis and modification that are justifying removal of those technical limitations for operation after 2023. In addition, according to Slovenia legislation, the operator is obliged every 10 years to provide that nuclear facility is in good condition and saved by performing so-called periodical safety review. The existing nuclear power plants will be subject to the, such safety reviews in 2013 and ne in next 10 years. In your reviews, Slovenia will also take into consideration the finding of EU stress test. The, the operation life of the nuclear power plant could those be extended after 2023 only if the uh, recently submitted application for the justification of technical changes is approved in periodical uh, safety review. So I, I would like to say that in our opinion, in the case that there is existing activity with unlimited air decision, with no technical changes, there is not always the case for ESPO convention uh, application. Uh, uh, Slovenia, with regard uh, to a protocol. Uh, hmm? Yeah, uh, this is extremely useful information. Could we make sure that this is distributed uh, after the, the meeting uh, as time is running and uh, other speakers would like to take the floor. Okay, uh, I, uh, I agree. I just uh, want to say uh, that uh, we are glad uh, to see that, uh, that experiences on that field, that we are starting SEA application on national energy program and we, that we are interested for active participation in exchange of good practice. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is very helpful. Finland. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have one question and one uh, observation, and my question goes to Andres, uh, to, uh, to Austria. You may hold the world record of being an affected party in nuclear power plant facilities, and um, my question is that how do you see the benefits of the ESPO Convention? especially from, from the point of view of the affected party. And uh, my observation goes to, uh, um, to an issue, how wide should the notification be in nuclear power plant facilities? And as we have seen some uh, parties um, giving notifications on a region-wide basis, and um, I wonder, this should be an issue that uh, we should uh, devote more time, but uh, I would just to, to like to draw your attention to that issue that, for example, if we receive a notification, we also need information in our own national language, so please take into account when you, see, when you send region-wide uh, notifications that it may not be enough in English, and this has consequences, but I think this is an issue that we should, uh, at some other occasion, uh, have some more clarification to. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Finland. The language issue is extremely important. 
Uh, the very last uh, intervention, IAIA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a question also related to the alternatives, which I find a very critical issue. And, and my, my question uh, derives from also Andrea's uh, presentation, particularly when he refers to the fact that in Austria, when considering alternatives uh, uh, with respect to nuclear, you require that several different, if I understood well, several different alternatives that consider other options for electricity supply be considered. Now my question is, uh, knowing that um, the legislation and the convention require that a, a program exist to undertake strategic environmental assessment, and knowing also that uh, very often the proponents, even of a program, will be, uh, and in this case a nuclear program, will be very reluctant to actually consider the strategic environmental assessment of the overall environmental policy, which is required to consider other sources of electricity supply. My question is, how do you resolve the problem in Austria in this regard, and what are the recommendations you would make to others? Thank you. Thank you very much. Very relevant question. I see that Andrea has got uh, most of the questions, not to say all of them. You have the floor. Thank you. But it will take more than one minute. I'll, I'll try. Uh, I'll try my best. Um, Right. First message, yes, it would be a good thing if it would be good practice uh, to put energy programs, strategies, whatsoever, to a strategic environmental assessment. Uh, it's tr it, legally, it's tricky because many of the programs simply do not qualify according to, to the directive or, or the convention, but it would be good practice, first thing. Second thing, we are fully aware uh, that also the, the ESPO Convention and, and in the, the Environmental Impact Assessment Directive concerning the alternatives is vague. So again, we invite that to do it as a good practice to show the alternatives on the system, but there's no so to say, legal title for that. We are aware of that, so we recommend to do it. Um, in terms of the benefits of, of taking part in, in so many procedures, well, first of all, it's, it's a lot of work, believe me. Um, it provides information. Um, it provides a forum for the general public to voice their concerns. And our experience is, very bluntly speaking, if we do provide it, in particular with installations which are far, far away, um, the response is not very massive. But if we do not take part in the procedure, we do not provide th this opportunity, then there's uh, an uproar. It's different in neighboring countries, of course, because the people are m more engaged in the issue. And, and that may be the most important thing from, from a governmental point of view, um, as we are, according to international law, required to do our own emergency preparedness for any circumstances to protect our population, we need to know what actually the risks are. And the environmental impact assessment procedure is the first step. Um, and here I answer another question. Um, yes, it's true. Environmental impact assessments are in the early phase of project development, and they're very general. But the convention and the directive foresee a monitoring process. So if I consult with Finland, and Finland convinces me that they do this and this thing to keep the potential impact limited, then we can talk about it in when the project actually is there, or when the design is ready and approved, et cetera, et cetera. How did you fulfill that? So the, the convention provides for them. That, that is an element which hasn't, at least in the nuclear se sector, hasn't been used so much until now because the project are relatively new, but it's already there. So it's just, just to use it. And therefore, I'm rather an advocate of early environmental impact assessments. Um, but, and then I leave the rest. Uh, even for the new Gen 3 designs, large, Severe accidents with large releases cannot be excluded. And I haven't even seen a proof that early containment failure, this is a technical term, can really be excluded. It's very unlikely, no doubt about that, but it cannot be excluded. And as long as this is not the case, nuclear is a long range issue, not only for neighboring countries, but for long distances. 
it's not the only technology. I mean, it's the same with chemistry and with some, some biotechnology. So it's certainly an issue for the convention to deal with that. How are there some guidelines to deal with long range impacts? So I, I finish because I think I used my time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Stasi. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to, to tell a very short story about my first uh, meeting with environmental impact assessment. Uh, actually, we discussed in, in Lithuania how to, in most effective way to perform it. And when experts said, uh, please select one site very good and second one very bad. So it would be the easiest way to uh, convince people that uh, you are doing right things. So if you be looked then we looked into Belarusian report. Actually, we found exactly the same approach. They analyzed one side uh, uh, very close to uh, Lithuanian border, and also they provided uh, very limited information about two other options. But they rejected them because they are in uh, Karst region. So uh, the construction of nuclear facilities is infeasible at all. Uh, that's all. Well. Uh, and uh, okay, yeah. I am instructed by the chairman and the secretariat that uh, we have <laughs> exceeded the time, but uh, as I wasn't seeing any reaction, I was trying to, <laughs> to benefit uh, from this. Uh, let me draw uh, some, uh, some conclusions. I think that the, the exercise is not over and that the working, the background note uh, on the application of the convention uh, which is the note of the Secretariat, is a good basis that uh, highlights uh, good practice that could, uh, we could develop. And uh, I would like to say that on the basis of this note and of today's discussions and contributions, probably uh, if we have the ambition, and I should we have it, we can go for a guidance document that could develop good practice in this highly sensitive and important field. Now, First conclusion, I think that it is very important to start from the people and uh, to build confidence uh, or rebuild confidence on nuclear energy, which requires transparency, which requires social acceptance, not only within our own member states or countries where there is nuclear, but also within the neighbors, because the neighbors will react according to the reactions of their public opinion, especially public opinions like the one in Austria and Greece or in other countries that are, uh, that are against the nuclear, which require their governments to be active on this. The second thing, I think that the notification could be developed as a good practice, and we could develop voluntary notifications even for those countries that have not ratified the convention, because if they notify, they can expect that they will also be notified uh, in a uh, gentleman's agreement or in a comitas gentium, uh, to use this Latin word, uh, approach. Therefore, we can work on this and enlarge the scope of the notifications. Impact assessment. I think that the impact assessment is not only to cover severe accidents. I fully agree that it should cover. But it is an impact assessment to cover the full life cycle of a nuclear plant, from the stage of the transportation of the materials to build the plant and the selection of the site, through the full construction of the projects, the operation of the projects, the accident, and the monitoring of the projects before the accident, and possibly if there is an accident, uh, the, the post-monitoring uh, and remediation, etc. Therefore, the impact assessment, including the monitoring, and on this I would like to say that the EIA directive does not have monitoring provisions. We are now working to have monitoring provisions in the EIA directive. Some member states have transposed it and have introduced uh, monitoring provisions. There are monitoring provisions in the SCA directive, and we do believe that it is a good practice, I'm speaking fast, to have uh, monitoring. In addition to the EIA and to the uh, ESPO Convention, one, one has to take into consideration other points that were made by the previous speakers. There are directives on habitats, uh, including the Emerald Network for the non-EU member states, directives on the water framework uh, which uh, uh, define river basin uh, plans, 
which have also to be applied in addition to the SCA as a good practice, if there is a plan and a program, to the EIA, other assessments which are more focused and more specific assessments uh, should, be, uh, should be foreseen. Uh, the ESPO Convention as, and the Euratom Treaty, as, as I mentioned before, are living organisms and therefore within the text of both uh, instruments we can see how we can better address uh, the real issues that we are considering. I mean, the language issue that was referred by Finland, it should be a good practice that uh, Lithuania mentioned this, that the notifications are translated into the languages. Now, if this can trigger, of course, uh, an effect that everybody would like to be notified and uh, uh, to notify, uh, one has to consider a good practice which could be using the lingua franca, uh, which is uh, currently uh, English. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, the Convention on Nuclear Safety, there are currently also thoughts within the European uh, Union on uh, upgrading uh, this uh, convention. Uh, these are the uh, conclusions that I wanted to share uh, with you. I will refine them for tomorrow for the, the high-level meeting where I have to report again. I would like to thank very much all the speakers. Uh, to thank you all for your active participation and to thank the Secretariat for their patience and Switzerland as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.